Hello friends, in this video I will be covering uh, some of the very important question and answer for stock analyst and cyber security interview questions of the senior level. In my previous uh, video I have covered uh, the entry level or the four freshers. Here uh, I will cover for the senior level or one plus two plus years of experience if you have in SOC analyst or in cyber security uh, domain. So you can uh, have uh, these questions as they are important uh, in the interviews. So let us start with the first question. So how do you ensure that a server is secure? Very important question. They will ask you this because uh, you would have experienced this in your work uh, during your experience in, as a SOC analyst or as a information security analyst like that. So to secure a server, uh, it is vital to first establish a protected uh, connection using SSH that is uh, secure shell protocol as uh, SSH access encrypts data transmissions. SSH uses port number 22 by default which is common knowledge to hackers. So use port numbers between 1024 and 32767 to reduce the risk of attacks. You should also authenticate an SSH server uh, using SSH keys instead of uh, a traditional password. To secure uh, web admi administration areas, deploy a, so a secure socket layer that is SSL, SSL that to safeguard server client and server server communication via the internet. Intrusion prevention software, firewalls, password requirements and user management tactics can help maintain server security. How do you differentiate between uh, symmetric and asymmetric encryption? While symmetric encryption uses a single key for encryption and decryption, asymmetric encryption uses a public key for encryption and a private key for decryption. The success of symmetric encryption necessitates a secure exchange of the key and a technique is typically used to transfer large volume of data. Asymmetric encryption is a slower but more secure technique that is generally deployed to transfer small amounts of data. While symmetric encryption offers confidentiality, asymmetric encryption guarantees confidentiality as well as authenticity and non-repudiation. Differentiate between IDS and IPS. This is a very important question. Many of the interviews they will ask this IDS, IPS uh, or what is IDS or what is IPS or differentiate between them. Intrusion detection system that is IDS monitor networks for suspicious activity. When a potential threat is detected, the system will alert the administrator. Intrusion prevention systems are equipped to respond to threats and are able to reject data packets, issue firewall commands and uh, server connections. Both systems can operate on a signature or anomaly basis. Signature-based system detects attacks behavior or signatures that match a pre-programmed list, while the anomaly-based system uses AI and machine learning to detect deviation from a model of normal behavior. What is CIA triad? This is also a very important question whether you are in the fresher level or experience level. The CIA triad is a conceptual model designed to represent core components of the information security and guide organizations as they craft their cybersecurity strategies. CIA stands for confidentiality, integrity, and availability. To maintain confidentiality of an organization's data, only authorized parties and processes should have the data access privileges. To preserve the integrity of their data, organization must uh, prevent tampering and malicious modifications. To ensure data availability, systems and networks should run smoothly so that authorized parties can access data whenever necessary. Cyber attacks target one or more legs of this triad. HIDS versus NIDS are the same or differentiate between them. HIDS are host-based intrusion detection system while NIDS are network-based intrusion detection system. Because HIDS can detect malicious data packets originating from within the enterprise network, these systems are useful for catching inside threats. HIDS reviews historical data to identify unconventional cyber attacks. Unusual host-based actions changes to the system files will trigger an alert. NIDS, however, detect threats in real time through live data tracking or network traffic, meaning NIDS can catch hackers before a complete system breach occurs. What is SSL encryption? 
SSL that is Secure Sockets Layer. Secure Socket Layer encryption serves to create a secure internet connection. SSL encryption protects client-client, server-server and client-server connections, circumventing unauthorized parties from monitoring or tampering with data transmitted online. An updated protocol called TLS that is Transport Layer Security Encryption has replaced SSL encryption as the standard security certificate. Explain a brute force attack along with the steps to prevent it. Brute force attacks strive to unlock password protected assets by repetitively entering authentication credentials either manually that is based on guesswork or via automated credential stuffing allowing for rapid testing of numerous possible combinations. To prevent brute force attack, cybersecurity professionals should make unique login URLs for various users group, monitor server logs and analyze log files, use two-factor authentication, limit logins to a particular IP address or range, implement CAPTCHA as a part of the login process to prevent automated attacks, Throttle login attempts triggered by failed login attempts. Make the root user inaccessible via SSH. What do you mean by port scanning? Also an important question. Ports are a vital assets that are vulnerable to security breaches. Attackers use port scanning to locate open ports that are sending or receiving data on a network. This technique is also used to access a host vulnerabilities by sending packets to various ports and analyzing their responses. Nevertheless, port scanning is not an inherently malicious activity. Cybersecurity specialists use port scanning to evaluate network security. Explain the OSI model. In my previous videos, I have covered the brief explanation of the OSI model with each layer and their protocol. So here I will give some introduction to it and uh, if you want a detail uh, you can check the other YouTube videos. Developed in 1970s, the OSI Open Systems Communication Model is an conceptual framework that illustrates the architecture and communication functions of a network system. The model which consists of seven collaborative layers characterizes these functions into rules and describes how layers operate collaboratively to transmit data. What is identity theft? Can you prevent it? Identity theft occurs when the, an attacker uses a target's private data to impersonate or steal from them. Methods of identity theft prevention include basic cybersecurity best practices like using robust, frequently updated passwords and adding authentication steps whenever possible. Installing antivirus software can prevent intruders from accessing your personal information via malware. Some of the most common methods of identity theft include hacking, phishing, and physical mail theft. Explain social network phishing. Phishing is a cybercrime technique in which attackers disguise fraudulent communications as legitimate or trustworthy in order to steal sensitive data or install malware on a target's device. Social network phishing, sometimes also referred to as angler phishing, harnesses notifications or messaging features on social media to lure targets. Black hat hackers versus white hat hackers versus gray hat hackers are all illegal. Black ha hackers use a cybersecurity knowledge to gain unauthorized access to the networks and systems for malicious or exploitative ends. This type of hacking is illegal. Conversely, white hat hackers, also known as ethical hackers, are hired to evaluate the vulnerabilities of a client system. Because white hat hackers operate uh, with the permission of their targets, this activity is legal. Grey hat hackers may search for system vulnerabilities without permission, but instead of exploiting the vulnerability directly, may offer to fix the issue for a price. Because the intrusion was not permitted, grey hat hacking is often considered unethical and illegal. How frequently do you perform patch management? Patches are necessary to prevent security breaches and patch management is a vital part of upgrading and securing applications and operating systems. The frequency with which you should perform management depends on the unique components of your security infrastructure as well as industry specific regulatory requirements. 
HIPAA, for the example, has particular stipulation for patch management in healthcare settings. As a rule of thumb, you should conduct antivirus updates weekly and database patches should be installed quarterly in confluence with the patch release cycle. Vital security patches should be implemented within days of release. Daily patch reports consisting of inventory scans can help verify that all the recent updates are installed. Can you reset a password protected BIOS configuration? BIOS, basic input or output system, is a firmware located on a memory chip, often in a computer's motherboard or system board. A typical BIOS security feature is a user password that must be entered to boot up a device. If you wish to reset a password protected BIOS configuration, you will need to turn off your device, locate a password reset jumper on a system board, remove the jumper plug from the password jumper pins and turn on the device without the jumper plug to clear the password. This will reset BIOS to default factory settings. What is the difference between black box testing and white box testing? Black box testing evaluates the behavior and functionality of a software product. This testing methodology operates from an end-user perspective and requires no software engineering knowledge. Black box testers do not have the information about the internal structure or design of the product. Conversely, white box testing is typically performed by developers to access the quality of a product's code. The tester must understand the internal operation of the product. What do you mean by phishing? How many types of phishings are there? Phishing is a type of cyber attack in which communication that appear trustworthy contain content that installs malware on a target's device or directs a target to a malicious website. While email phishing is perhaps most common, other types of phishing exist as well. Spear phishing pursues specific targets within an organization and uses real information to convince targets that our malicious communication is, is an internal request from the organization, thereby increasing the chances that the target will access the malware disguised in the communication. Whaling is a type of phishing that targets C-suit executives and smishing is a phishing attack conducted via the text or SMS. From wishing to farming, over 10 different kinds of phishing exist and the list continues to grow. What is forward secrecy? Forward secrecy is a feature of certain key agreement protocols that generates a unique session key for each transaction. Thanks to forward secrecy, an intruder cannot access data from more than one communication between a client and a server, even if the security of one communication is compromised. What are spyware attacks? Spyware is a kind of malware that is covertly installed on a target device to collect private data. Spyware can infiltrate a device when a user visits a malicious website, opens an infected file attachment, or installs a program or application containing spyware. Once installed, the spyware monitors activity and captures sensitive data, later relaying this information back to third-party entities. What is ARP poisoning? That is ARP poisoning. Can you explain with an example? ARP poisoning is a type of cyber attack that aims to interrupt, redirect, or covertly monitor network traffic. The ARP establishes IP level connection to a new host by accepting requests from a new device to join the LAN and provides an IP address. The app also translates the IP address to a MAC address and sends ARP packets requests to query appropriate MAC addresses to use, which saves time for network administrators. After sending fabricated ARP packets to link an intruder's MAC address within an IP of a device already connected to a LAN, a hacker can initiate ARP poisoning by changing the extent ARP table to contain falsified MAC maps. A successful ARP poisoning will link the attacker's MAC address with the target's LAN, re routing incoming traffic to the hacker to the attacker what do you mean by sql injection an sql injection is a type of cyber attack that inserts malicious sql code via input data to manipulate databases a properly executed sql injection can read sensitive data stored in the database modify that data execute administration operation or potentially issue operating system commands
This enables attackers to manipulate data, create reputation problems, destroy data or restrict access to it, disclose all the data within the database and make themselves administrators of the database server. Explain Active Reconnaissance Active reconnaissance is a type of cyber attack used to gather intelligence about a system's vulnerabilities. To conduct this kind of reconnaissance, attackers must interact with a target via automated scanning or manual testing with tools like TraceRoad. While this can be a quick and accurate way to gather information, active reconnaissance is a high-risk, high-reward approach as direct engagement with the target is more likely to be caught by a firewall or IDS. How do you differentiate between viruses and worms? While viruses attach uh, to a file or program, worms exploit network vulnerabilities to enter a network. Viruses only replicate when activated by a host and will remain dormant in a system until an action is taken to trigger execution. Conversely, worms propagate independently after breaching a system and can spread without human interaction or the assistance of a host. So these are some of the very important questions uh, that is at the experience level. Hope you like the video. Please hit the like. If you like the video, please hit the like button. Do share this video among your friends. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.